Hi guys! This is another one of the videos in my sort of technique basic painting series guides that I started doing. And this one is kind of related to the adage that fairly often gets bandied around in wargaming figure circles, which is always make sure you have good faces, bases, and flags. And in case that isn't clear to you, it basically means as long as you paint the flags really well in a unit, you make sure the faces on your figures look good and that you base them really nicely, you can get away with a lot more and you don't have to put as much time and energy into the other aspects of what you're doing. And I definitely subscribe to that adage. And so I want to, you know, cover those things for you, obviously, so you get some, you know, sense of, you know, how to make good faces, bases, and flags. Now, the flags part I've actually already covered. There's a video I've done that shows how I make flags. It's an older video, but I think it still has very relevant information. So I'll link to that down below in the description box. Uh, I have not yet done a tutorial on how I base figures, and I know a lot of people have asked me for that, but it is coming up, I promise. I will be showing you some different ways to base your figures before too long. So what I'm going to be covering in this video, though, is how to paint faces. And I have been over, I know, I have a whole playlist on my YouTube channel of painting skin on different figures, but it's a little bit more general. It covers a whole mini, and it's sped up, so... What I'm going to be doing in this tutorial is I'm going to be focusing only on the figure's face, and I'm going to be doing it sort of at real speed. I'm not going to be skipping over anything, I'm, so I'm going to really just show you how I do the face, all the brush work that I use, and just really focus in on that. And I will be using uh, Vallejo colors for this as well, which I haven't done in a lot of my other skin painting videos, and I'm doing that obviously because I know foundry is a problem for you guys, and that's what I usually paint my skin with, but Vallejo is easier to get, and it'll, it'll make more sense for more people, so I will be using the Vallejo triad, and hopefully this whole video will give you some sense of how to paint probably one of the most important and most critical uh, parts of your figure because if you get because that's if you get the face right then it's really true a lot of the rest is not going to matter so much and if you screw the face up it's really going to detract from an otherwise really nice figure Okay, so I'm going to start out by base coating my figure, and I just want to mention real quick up front that even though this is strictly about painting faces, I'm also going to be doing his hands, because those, that's just another flesh air, and I figured, what the heck, I'll take care of those while I'm at this, so that's kind of going to be a bonus for you. You kind of get to see how I do hands as well. Um, now, uh, there's a lot of potential color choices you can make when it comes to skin, and I know that can be overwhelming. Uh, especially with Vallejo because there's just a lot of colors out there and you can put them together in a whole bunch of different ways. Uh, with Vallejo, I tend to like my figures to be a little tannish, got a more sort of a brownish yellow cast to their skin and I, 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 you know, if I'm choosing the colors myself, I should say, because of course with Foundry, their triad is just a little bit more on the pink side, but if, if I'm choosing the colors myself anyway, I often will go for a sort of a more brown tone figure, and that's what I am going to be doing on this one. So my base coat here is uh, Vallejo Brown Sand, so it's kind of a medium tan brown color and what I'm doing here is I'm really I'm just really applying it uh, all, to all the areas where there's any skin showing uh, try to get a nice even coat it doesn't have to be super thick so if your coverage is, isn't perfect don't worry about that too much it'll come out fine in the end once the base coat is dry, I am going to apply a wash to my figure. I am using Citadel Reichland Flesh Shade for that, or if you're going by the old names of Citadel colors, this would be Ogre and Flesh. It's kind of a brownish red tone, and it's very suitable for pretty much, I basically use it on pretty much any skin tone for any nationality, any region. This color is pretty good in all cases. And all you really need to do here is just apply a nice, thick, heavy layer. Really get down in all of the cracks. Um, I, I, in my opinion, you really can't overdo this step, quite honestly. But you probably only need one coat at the same time. You don't need to do this several times or anything like that. Once the um, wash and uh, base coat are dry, I'm going to start applying my sort of medium tone color to the figure. Uh, in this case, I am going to 
make it by making kind of a 50-50 mix of the Vallejo um, brown sand and uh, Vallejo Iraqi sand, which is kind of a very pale kind of light khaki color. So I'm going to, you don't want to just mix them 50-50, so don't use just half one color and half the other. I'm, when I mean 50-50, I mean you want them to be visually, um, sort of to look visually in between those two colors. So that's basically what I mean. <clears throat> so I've taken, I've made that mix and I've made it somewhat thin, you, as you can see, to make sure that there's some transparency. It's not perfectly saturated on the first cut. You can really still see some of that darker color showing through. And that's obviously so I can go back in later and build it up as necessary to make certain areas lighter. When I'm painting the hands this particular with this particular uh, layer, I pretty much apply it everywhere. The only place it's not going to go is really down between the fingers. You want to be a little bit careful that you don't get this layer down there. Now I'm going to move on to the face. Um, and the, the trick with painting faces is really to start with the areas that stick out the most on the face and sort of work back from there. So you can see I've covered pretty much his entire nose with this color. And then I'm going to work on his cheeks. Um, with cheeks, the basic rule of thumb is you want to apply the most paint to the tops of the cheeks, kind of up at the top, sort of under the eyes where your cheekbone comes out. So put the strongest color and then sort of drag down from there so that it gets lighter and thinner and more subtle as you go down. So I'm going to get that on both cheeks. And you have to keep in mind with this that when you're painting the face, you can be very, very dependent on the quality of the facial sculpt. Some faces are really, really well sculpted, and then others are not so well sculpted, or because of how they were cast, they end up a little bit distorted. And, you know, that can make a really tremendous difference to how your figure ends up looking. <clears throat> So, you know, you sometimes just have to do the best with what you've got. Um, once I've got the cheeks painted, I'm going to move on. I'm going to apply uh, the color pretty much the entire chin region because that's another area of a person that sticks out. So that's going to be needing to be painted lighter. Also, the under lip area or the um, under nose area, I should say the upper lip area, you're going to want to paint that. You can see I'm leaving dark color sort of down around the edges, under his nose and around the edges of that sort of upper lip but the upper lip itself is light. The other thing is you want the bottom lip, you should also paint it in this color because it sticks out and it needs to have some highlight and emphasis. This particular figure, as I said, casting problems can get a little annoying. He's got his mouth kind of open in a strange grimace. It's much wider open on one side than the other. It's a little bit strangely distorted, but oh well, I'm gonna do my best with it. Um, the other area that I paint at this stage is his uh, around his eyes. I paint his upper eyelids with this color because, you know, I, I want a little bit of highlight, a little bit of indication there. So I just lightly uh, put, a, put a thin layer of paint on there. And you're also probably going to want to do his neck with this color, unless, of course, the neck is really obscured or, you know, it's really under underneath the chin is not so necessary, you know, because that's often in deep shadow. But you may want to at least apply one layer of the paint. I will, once I've done all of these areas, I'm then going to go back in and I may apply a second layer with this color as needed to parts that I want to brighten up a little bit because it is a little bit transparent. So things like, as you can see, I'm going to go over his cheeks, the sides and top again. I'm going to go over his nose and chin and lip again. And on his hands, I may put another coat on his fingers and sort of where his knuckles are just to sort of further lighten those areas and brighten them up and, you know, develop sort of an extra sort of highlight shade, which, you know, will just add a little bit more subtlety and nuance to the whole face and that's of course very important with faces because you you want them to really have a lot of attention and time in them because they are a focal point of course. Now before I continue highlighting the figure I am first going to apply all of the really dark dark shadows to the figure and this is not really layering at all this is really more like fine lining so if you don't like blending, this is you'll you'll appreciate this. I use a Vallejo Black Red for this step, and I use this all the time, pretty much. Even if I'm using foundry paints, I still use Vallejo Black Red for this. Uh, it's a it, you think red, maybe that's a strange color choice, but 
you know, there is a lot of red in human skin, and when it's used as a super deep shadow color, I don't know what it is, but I find that it just really works brilliantly here. So make sure you've got your paint pretty thin because it needs to flow because you're going to be painting some really small, fine details. One area that I always put it is between all the fingers. And so you need, that's, yeah, you can see why you need to have, be able to really apply it finely. So I, I go in and I line between all the fingers. And don't worry too much. If you get it where you don't want, if it gets a little bit onto the top of the finger, that's okay. You can then go back over it with some of that, that color that we mixed in the last step and sort of clean that up. And I very often have to do that. Now, moving on to the face. There are several areas where you really want this color. One major area is going to be between the lips, you know, and his mouth. And this, you know, there'd be, be more or less color here depending on how open his mouth is. So, but you want to definitely fill it in with this color. The other area is going to be under his bottom lip. You want to put a very small, thin amount of it there. You don't want it to be too heavy or thick. So if you get it a little bit too much, that's okay. You can just go back in once again with the other color and clean that up. But these are these are definitely important areas to hit with that color. Uh, another area where I often put this color is um, going to be under his nose. So you can just hit that with a little dot of color. And of course, the most important thing to do with this color is to paint in his eyes. Now, any of you who've watched me paint much, <coughs> know that my philosophy on eyes is not actually to paint them. Uh, a lot of people like to try to paint the whites and the eyeball, but I find it's very, very, very hard to do that without getting sort of a doll-like sort of kind of weird looking effect on your figure. I have seen maybe even of the, uh, only some of the really top painters in my opinion can do that and have it look good. I can name, I probably count on one hand the number of people I have seen paint eyes at 28 millimeter and get it to look real and nice. I really, even painters or otherwise, I think are amazingly good painters. There's so many of them that try to paint eyes and I think it looks terrible. So I don't do it because at this scale, really, you just don't, wouldn't see the eyes. They just sort of all sort of blend together and kind of fall into shadow. And so I just don't do it. What I do instead is I just sort of paint around them. So. I, as you noticed in the last step, I painted his upper eyelid. So what I'm going to do now with this r black red is I am going to paint sort of a dark area underneath that uh, upper eyelid, sort of a large, fairly large area usually. And that's where his eyeball would be, but it just sort of falls into shadow. And then I am going to um, paint a, a thinner line of the red above his upper eyelid. So that's sort of under his, uh, where his brow would be, because there's always a deep shadow there as well, uh, but you don't want as much. And depending on how this goes, you may find yourself having to go back in and clean things up. I often do. If it's not quite even, if I'm not quite happy with it, I will often have to go back in and maybe add more paint to the upper eyelids because they got messed up or clean around the edges to get even. Because that's another thing with eyes. You have to make sure that you get a more or less uh, symmetrical effect. And that can be sometimes hard. And once again, because sometimes like with this guy, the sculpting was working against me a little tiny bit, uh, you know, so you just have to really do your best. But I would really, I strongly recommend don't paint eyeballs. There's almost nobody who can pull it off well. And I know opinions differ. I know some people like how that looks uh, or, you know, they might, kind of disagree with me about how the, how it comes out, how nice it looks, but I am really strict on this and I nine times out of ten I just hate how painting eyeballs look. So if you if you disagree with me, fine, but I'm not gonna show you how to do it because I don't do it and I think it's mostly just not very smart. And I'm going to go back in now and just sort of work on refining the lips a little bit more, trying to get them a little bit more even, trying to compensate. You can sometimes, if the sculpting is a little unsymmetrical or a little bad, you can sometimes compensate. You can kind of adjust that with the paint, kind of even it out. You can try at least. And that's what I'm doing here a little bit, just trying to get an even more, more symmetrical face and just getting tidier, neater lines here. And so then that's about all you want to do with the red black. The only other real thing that I like to do is, depending on, like with this guy, he's got a helmet. I like to put the red black areas that would be really shaded. Like I'm gonna, you can line sort of around the top and edge of his face with this color, kind of go up underneath his helmet. Cause that's all going to be an extreme shadow. 
And, you know, this is a very good color uh, for doing that particular thing. And now that I've got that red lining color on, I'm going to move on with my second highlight, which in this case is going to now be a pure Vallejo Iraqi sand. And I have thinned it down again a fair amount so it'll be nice and transparent uh, so I can build it up. And in fact, I probably thinned it down more than I did in that sort of first step because I really do want to be able to build this color up a little bit more gradually. Uh, when I'm applying this color to the hands, I will apply, I'll apply always first sort of along the knuckles so it's strongest there and then blend backwards or pull down his hand so it gets darker towards the base of his hand. And I may put, probably will put several layers on there just to build it up. And I, of course, will also always highlight along the tops of his fingers. And again, I may do this with several layers because I like to make these areas bright and apply really extra emphasis. And of course, if his thumb's showing, I always, always tend to highlight that extra with plenty of the, um, you know, this, whatever this highlight color is. And then I move on to his face. It's, we're doing the same thing basically we did in the last step, but we're just going to be applying less color in smaller areas. So you want to put some color <clears throat> on his chin, of course, on his upper lip. I tend to put it sort of in the middle and then drag to the left and right. And then, of course, a, a th pretty strong line on his bottom lip. I really like to emphasize the bottom lip, so you probably want to put a good bit of color on that. When it comes to his nose, I'm just going to be applying it to the tip and sort of the size where the nostrils would be. I'm not going to try to put that color higher up on his nose, especially because he's wearing a helmet, so his top of half of his face is a little bit in shadow, and I don't want to overdo that. <laughs> And then his cheeks, of course, are very important, but you don't want to overdo those. Again, you're going to want to apply it sort of to the tops of his cheekbones, sort of the apples of his cheeks, and then uh, just a small amount, and then maybe blend down ever so slightly, but you're going to want to put less paint on, really just focus it on the tops of his cheeks, maybe along sort of the sides of his cheeks going down, you know, where there's that crease between your nose and your upper lip and your cheeks. I like to run a line along there to emphasize it, but you don't want to put, in case, any, in any case, you don't want to put this lighter color sort of towards the back sides of his cheeks. You want to leave them darker because, you know, because of our cheekbones, that area is, a, you, you know, often a little bit darker. It sort of curves inward slightly. So you don't want to emphasize it with this color again. Another area to put this color would be on his, his brow bones and his forehead. If the figure has an exposed brow bone and brow bones and forehead, this figure is wearing a helmet, so that's all in shadow. You're not going to see it, but was he, if he had no helmet or if the helmet was up higher on his head, you'd want to really highlight that forehead extensively because that's obviously an area that's going to be bright and it's going to be hit with a lot of light, and especially the brow bones. They stick out and you want to emphasize them extra. <coughs> Uh, in terms of his neck, you probably don't need to use too much of this higher highlight color there just because that area is going to be a little bit more shadowed. But if he has any sort of like tendons or um, sort of veins or anything or muscles kind of bulging in his neck like this guy does on one side, you might want to emphasize them extra with this color. And then I'm going to just go back in once, the, once my first layer has had a chance to dry and just build it up with the same color a little bit more. Just get it a little bit stronger on areas where I know I want a lot of emphasis, like the tops of the cheeks, the tip of the nose, the, the chin, and the bottom lip. Just really, and again here on the knuckles, so just really the same process but building an extra highlight layer. And generally, I like to apply a fourth really high highlight layer to my figures. And in this case, I've made that by taking the Iraqi sand and mixing some white into it to get quite a sort of a very light flesh tone. And this is the sort of thing where you're really going to want to just very lightly apply this to just very high extreme areas. And a lot of times, because the face is so small and so fine, you're not even really going to have to blend very much because the area is really too small for blending. You just want to apply a tiny, thin, very thin down amount of this color and it'll sort of blend itself. On his hands, I like to put this color on his knuckles because knuckles are a little bit light, especially if they're in a fist or gripping something. So I apply it heavily to knuckles, blend it out, the end of his thumb. On his fingers, I don't put it all over the whole finger consistently, but I like to put it along the tops of the fingers so it looks like the light is sort of hitting the tops of the figure of those fingers a little bit and then it's a little darker on the bottoms. But it's always, in this case, just really a touch of paint. And then on his face, 
His nose, I like to paint just the very tip of his nose with this color, just a teeny tiny dot on the tip of his nose, maybe dots on the side where his nostrils would be flaring out. Remember, this is really just those areas of the face that are the most brightest, that really catch the most light on a figure. Uh, other areas that I do is the top of his cheekbone, but then just a tiny, very thin, very transparent line, just very fine. And I'm going to blend it out quite a bit because I don't, I don't want it to get, to, to feel too heavy here. So I, I'm going to, you know, I'm really going to blend it out. And this is a case where you don't want to put more layers of this color on probably. You're just going to want to put one thin layer on because more layers would be too thick and too heavy and that would defeat the purpose. Uh, I'm going to, so the cheeks, I'm getting really top of his cheekbone only. In some cases I'd go down the side, but it depends a little bit on the figure sculpt. In this case, I'm really only going to hit the tops of the cheekbones. And I'm also going to hit his top lip, but I'm just going to do a very sort of thin line sort of along the bottom of his top lip, if that makes sense, very lightly. And of course his bottom lip, that you probably want to emphasize. I always really like to emphasize this extra so I'm going to put a reasonably thick, heavy layer of it onto his bottom lip. So that really stands out. Um, and then, of course, his chin. You can always feel free to highlight that quite a bit. So I'm just going to put kind of a small dot sort of in the middle of his chin and then sort of blend it out to the sides so that, you know, that just looks a little bit, there's just a little tiny bit of extra emphasis there. And you don't need to put this color at all on his neck. That will, that would be too bright and too extreme for those areas. So don't even bother doing that. Um, if, once again, if he is not wearing a helmet, if your figure has an exposed head, um, you're going to want to use this color to ex put extra highlight probably on his brow bones and blend it upward. And if your figure has exposed ears, that's a good point. I didn't mention that before. You're going to want to, uh, probably you're going to want to highlight them the same way. You're going to want to highlight the tops of the ears with this color so that there's some extra light in there because the ears really stick out. So they need extra highlighting. I also usually put the Vallejo Black Red sort of down inside the ears where the kind of the hole is going into your ear so that there's extra contrast there. Okay, and here is the skin on my um, finished uh, German um, World War II figure. This is, you know, this is the way that I uh, paint pretty much all of my figures. I do vary the palette, obviously, uh, depending on, you know, the ethnicity of the figure or, you know, whether I feel like using foundry. But this is a, this is a standard sort of color choices I would make, especially if I'm working <clears throat> with Vallejo. And, you know, uh, I, I have used this technique a lot, and I, this is just sort of for everyday figures. If I'm going to be doing, like, a real showpiece figure, I will make more layers of paint, build it up slower to get more subtlety, more graduation in the skin. But th this is a sort of my just basic t approach to, uh, you know, painting a face and, you know, painting hands. Uh, so I hope you found this to be useful. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, um, leave me comments. If you have questions about anything I did, need more clarification, uh, do let me know. Or if you have tips for other people or you have ideas you want to share with other people, you know, other things that are nice to know about painting uh, faces or your own experience with this, with this uh uh, please also leave those in the comments. It's very much appreciated. So that is all for now, and I will see you next time.